processing and parking plant. Kasarani was then an isolated area with virtually no residential developments or any other commercial developments at that time. Chris' immediate, immediate comments were that this is a well-built building. If I can get it at a good price, I will buy the property and think over on how to utilize it. Fast forward, this is what became Hako Industries. One, once the home of the famous Big Pens and Tiger Brads. That is how quick, as Eliud has said earlier, Chris was able to recognize an opportunity that came by. I also remember taking him to an old English residential house, which was sitting bang in the middle of a two and a half acre site on Shans Road, adjoining Tuna Estate. We debated on it for several months and finally agreed that it is not what was there that was important, but what could be developed in the future. Later, in year 2000, 20 modern residential units were developed on that site under the International House Limited Investment Portfolio. In 1997, Chris invited me to join in the board of International House Limited. And guided by him as chairman, the company invested on various properties, which to this day continue to yield impressive rental incomes. This is in addition to International House itself. Socially, and I don't want to repeat what Eliud has already said about Chris and his golf course friends. Chris was a jovial man. He enjoyed being with friends in the various clubs where he was a member, and he interacted with a very wide cross-section of individuals. At his offices in International House, where his main operational office was, he liked to engage and talk about his workers' welfare. If you were a hard and dedicated worker and delivered as expected, you were his good friend. However, if you were lazy and performed poorly, he would not hold back in openly expressing his disappointment. But as he did express his disappointment, he would try and guide you on how you should improve. To the family of Dr. Chris Kirubi, relatives, friends, and fellow citizens, let us emulate and continue building on Chris's vision, focusing on inclusive investments and developments for the benefit of our society and the country at large. This is the gift that he has left us with. Fare thee well, my friend. You fought a tremendous fight. It is time to rest until we meet again. Uh, the next uh, speaker uh, will be uh, John Masharia. And after that, we will have two virtual um, tributes. So if whoever's got the audiovisual, if you can cue them after, after uh, Mr. Mashari has come and spoken. Good morning, brothers and sisters. I greet you all in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. My name is John Macharia, 
and I love the Lord as my personal savior. I met Chris uh, 51 years ago through his brother-in-law, the father of Befari, who was working for Chris for a long time. And since then, we lived as very good friends and some people thought we were brothers. Because when he was working for Starring Winthrop, that's when I met him and we became friends. He became my mentor and I decided I will be a sales and marketing manager like him when he was in uh, Starring Winthrop. Until one day, I discovered as the sales and marketing manager for Eastern Africa, the sales manager for Kenya was getting more money than he was getting. And I thank all the members of parliament who are here because if they go to the uh, archives, they will realize that they took that case to parliament and wanted to know why Chris, who was the boss for Eastern Africa, was getting less money than the sales manager for Kenya. From that time, Chris was not very comfortable with starring Winthrop, and he left them later and joined C CMC. In CMC, he came to me and said, what car are you driving? And I told him I was driving an Opel. He said, you can't drive an Opel. It consumes a lot of fuel. It is too huge. Come, I give you a car. And he sold me a car. After two years, I bought another one from him. And we became very close friends. From CMC, he went to Kanatiko. We know what happened. And then, later, he decided to find his own way. And he came into International Life House and started working from there. I was in Silo Park House next door, and one day he invited me to a cup of tea, and he asked me a question. British Airways is an international company. It's a very good airline. It is the best in this country. Why, what are you doing in a parking lot? I asked him, what is a parking lot? He said, Silo Park House is a parking lot. That is where I park my car. Then I asked him, what do you want? He said, I want you to come to International House. That time he had bought it. And before I knew it, three, four months later, we had moved to 11th floor of International House. And we became close to one another. We used to go for coffee every day. And my bosses wanted to know what I was doing with Chris every day. I told him this man knows so many people who travel and I am using him to get good clients. And he also became a friend of British Airways and the bosses of British Airways and we lived there together for a long time. Ladies and gentlemen, they say friends are the family we choose or being chosen. It was the greatest moment of my life when Chris chose me to be his friend. And when he passed on, it was the moment that most of us, his friends, were so sad because we had lost a friend. Friendship transcends death. Memories made will never be forgotten, but create a lasting impression on those the person left behind. Most of us 
became better for being for having met Chris because he was such a wonderful friend. He was not jealous and he used to advise us what to do, to work hard and make money. Chris could not understand why young people like us that time should go to church instead of going out and making money. And we followed him until in 1985, when I gave my life to Christ. And I told Chris, Chris, we are going to be friends forever. But one thing you will never do is to discourage me to go to church every Sunday. And one day, I will work so hard and you will also follow me, you will become born again Christian. Chris did not want to hear that, but I remember one time he had a course, a kid in the high course. And Beverly here can tell you, Chris had decided he would rather be fined for going late than going without me. And I didn't want him to get to that stage. So we used to meet every morning. We would pray together. And, that, and then I would escort him to the court. And whatever happened in that case, that is what Chris started thinking about Christ. You mean prayers are that serious? That case has been thrown out? Now, don't push me. Don't rush me. But one day, I will become a born-again Christian. <laughs> so every time we had a function in Chris' house, he used to make sure that we, I, we, we say a word, a word of God and we pray together. Every time he came to my house, he would say, since you pray, when you come to my house, this time I am going to pray. And then he told me one day, I always get courage to pray in your presence because you know me and you know whether I am improving or not. And he started praying. We started uh, going to, uh, to, to, to our, we went, to, we went twice to our church and he was very ex excited. He became a friend of uh, our pastor and the first person of our group to get Saved again was Maina Karaoke, who he later employed in uh, Coca-Cola. And Maina used to tell Chris, Macharia is misreading you. We all know God. The only thing we have not done is that we have not, uh, uh, we have not renewed our passports to go to heaven. For me, I renewed mine. Chris, you are alone. If we go to heaven, you will be left behind without a renewed passport. So when Chris gave his life to Christ, he called me. I remember I was in church. I walked out, and I was out. I missed that service because I talked to Chris for one hour. Then I gave him to my senior pastor to talk to him because they were very good friends. And the whole church was left behind for another 15 minutes praying for Chris. Brothers and sisters, we are going to miss Chris. For his children, uh, Robert, Marian, don't forget, when you are getting married, when, you are pay, when we, were paying, we were receiving dowry, I was there to represent your dad. And even when you got married, I know you can still remember what I told you. And even now, Marian, Andrew, Robert, remember, I am here for you. And I can tell you, Chris was only four years older than me, but there is something he disagreed with me. I told him that we are going to live according to Genesis 6 and verse 3. That God was contented with man and he was going to give a man 120 years. But Moses, the same person who wrote that verse, went to 
Psalms 90 and said that man will live for, a hundred and, no, for 70 if he is lucky, 80. Chris agreed with Moses. I have refused. I am here to live for 180, 120 years. So I am here for the next few years to 120. Thank you. God bless you all. Let us remember Chris. Let us remember his family. And let us always make sure that we are there when they need us. Thank you and God bless you all. Thank you very much. I think we're going to have two tributes which are virtual. And the first tribute is from the Harvard Global Advisory Chair, uh, Dr., uh, Mr. Robert, uh, David uh, Rubenstein. So if we can have that queued up. I'm Larry Bacow, President of Harvard University. And I appreciate the opportunity to extend my condolences on the loss of Dr. Chris Kuhn. When Harvard established its Global Advisory Council in 2012, Chris was asked to serve as one of the group's inaugural members. Together with other distinguished leaders, he offered insight and guidance, always with his characteristic energy, that helped to shape how the university approaches its work around the world. Unfortunately, I was never able to meet Chris in person, but I knew well of his deep interest in education and its power to improve lives and uplift communities, especially on the African continent and in his home country. He understood that knowledge enables people to dream more boldly about what they can achieve for themselves and for others. Consider his actions on a visit to our campus in 2018, which was shared with me by the executive director of our Center for African Studies. Despite having a very busy schedule, Chris met with a Harvard scholar from Kenya who was exploring how climate change affects vegetation in East Africa. He listened to and learned from this person. He was generous with his time and his attention. He made an impression that will not be forgotten on any of us. May we all learn something from that moment of curiosity, kindness, and humility. And may we all work together to see that Chris's vision for a better world comes into sharper focus in the years ahead. Thank you again for this opportunity to rem remember a friend of education, and a friend of Harvard. I first met Chris when he invited me to his office when I first came to Kenya in 2000. He treated me with great courtesy and professionalism and kindness and briefed me on Kenya, its people, and the huge potential that Kenya had to offer. And I thought that it was very kind of him to not know me, but to do that, to, to take the time out of his schedule to, to do that for me. And over time, Safaricom and Chris and his companies were involved in many, many uh, deals together. Uh, we worked together in business relationships, mostly through DHL, HACO, and of course, Capital FM. However, subsequently over time, I met Chris professionally, personally, um, at many public events, privately, and he would always impress me with his humility, his great sense of humor, and his ability to see the big picture. I always felt that Chris gave you so much energy and sort of stimulated you for doing new things. I met Chris after he came back from the US after his medical treatment. And once again, I was impressed by his great courage and his sense of humility, despite his great accomplishments, his, you know, his wealth, um, I still, you know, you, you were really impressed by his humility and his ability to connect with you. I shall miss his laugh, I shall miss his energy, I shall miss his sense of humor, and most of all, I shall miss his humility. Thank you. Okay, so we're going to now uh, move from friends to the corporates that he served. And the first one will be from Bayer, from uh, Mr. Laurent Perrier.
to Marianne, Robert, Andrew, and the entire family of Dr. Chris Kirby. And to all Dr. Kirby's friends, colleagues, and business associates gathered here today. I join you today on behalf of the Board of Directors, Management, and Staff of Baya East Africa Limited to convey our deep, deepest condolence and to celebrate a life of much less impact. For us at Bayer, Dr. Chris was not only an esteemed shareholder and vice chairman of the board, but he was an icon that we all admired, a leader that inspired all of us, and a friend that we shared great times with. I join us all this morning to celebrate the life of a man who truly lived and made a difference. For the 44 years that he was a director at Bayer, Dr. Chris was instrumental in supporting the growth of our Bayer healthcare and agriculture businesses in Eastern Africa. He supported and freely engaged all stakeholders, including employees, clients, and farmers. Just in 2020, Dr. Kirubi commissioned Bayer's response to the locust infestation in Eastern Africa through a donation of Bayer's pesticide to governments of Uganda and Kenya. He also spreaded Bayer's COVID-19 response program in Africa through donation of Bayer's hybrid seed to smallholder farmers. There are just few examples that exemplify what has already been said. He was passionate about people and their well-being and keen on providing solutions to some of the most pressing challenges of our time. <clears throat> he was a believer of dreams, a true visionary leader, and to Chris to invest in ideas and in people. He represented brilliance, a life that inspired all of us, a life that burns so that all of us were lit. While we feel the lost and we truly miss Dr. Chris, we are comforted by the fact that he ran a good race and that his legacy and his works will continue to impact many generations to come. At Bayer, Dr. Kirby has left an indelible mark and for memory that we will always cherish. Our thoughts and prayers remain with the family. May our God Lord grant you solace and strength during this time of grief. We continue this journey together with you so as to continue the great works that Dr. Chris Kirby was doing. Great men don't die, and there are no goodbyes with great men. Fare thee well, Dr. Chris Kirby, and rest in peace. Thank you. The next tribute is from NBL, Mr. Xavier Salga. Good morning, everyone. To Marianne and Robert and the entire Kirubi family, friends and relatives, all protocols observed, we are here to honor and pay tribute to Dr. Chris Kirubi, as we fondly called him our chairman. Dr. Kirubi has been the chairman of the board of Nairobi Bottlers since September 2020. And you would imagine we would hold three board meetings in a year. And Chris never missed any board meeting, apart from when he fell unwell. And last year in November, he actually joined in Embakasi. We have known Chris um, as a truly visionary and purposeful leader, quite respected for his numerous achievements as an investor, a champion and advocate of the manufacturing sector in Kenya. He was very brilliant. 
His business acumen um, cannot be doubted. He had foresight, innovative, he was a connector, he was nonconformist, but yet very approachable. He built a community of young people. And you'll realize everywhere where Chris was involved, he really uplifted the young people. As the chairman of our board, it was such an honor to work with him. If you look at our companies when he joined the board and by the time he left, we were merely producing soft drinks. By the time he left, we had expanded into new categories like water, juices, energy, hot beverages, and the list was going on. He drove productivity of our businesses through consolidation and at the same time going for more investments. And all those ended up building more opportunities for the young people and the white community at large. A case in point is in 2005 when we con consolidated our operations for Nairobi Nakuru and Machakos. After the consolidation, he ring-fenced our property in Machakos, 27-acre property, and pinpointed it for development of an institute of development studies to help the local community in uh, Machakos. Um, it was not all business, you know, with, you know, with our chairman. There are a few things that I would call out that happened um, in, the, in the board. Once we had our board meeting in Sankara, and after the board meeting, we usually go for the market, for what you call a market visit. And in the market visit, there was one gentleman who did so well and presented himself so well. And in the introduction, he said, I have been acting in this position for a month. The gentleman was confirmed on the spot, and HR had to go and sort out documentation. Every time he would join the board, when he enters uh, the meeting, you would expect that he would distort the average wealth of the people in the meeting. And I would say now, let's compute our average wealth. And Chris would quickly come and say, maybe the best measure would be the mode. For those who skip maths, mode is the most common value in a data set. So you would imagine when he leaves again, it gets distorted or rebalanced again. Um, there's a critical point um, that, you know, when Chris was going through the cancer journey, in 2018, he told us and he linked us with Meditest um, Lab in Westland, in Parkland. And he actually booked an appointment for all of us in management to go and get tested. And he instructed us every year we, have, we must do it. And we did it. We have done it um, religiously since then. In 2018, um, there is a colleague of mine who is currently in Ethiopia, and his dad was struggling with cancer. He was going through prostate cancer treatment. And when Chris learned about it, he introduced him to two doctors, Dr. Sunil and Dr. Angela, to refer his dad. Beyond that, Chris would share his personal supplement for him to take to the father. That's how, um, you know, that's how concerned uh, our chairman was. It was not just business. It was very personal, okay? Quoting Maya Angelou, a great soul serves everyone all the time. A great soul never dies. It brings us together again and again. So chairman, though gone physically, his legacy remains. And the community he created is intact and growing. Rest well, Bona chairman. Thank you very much. I'm going to call, um, just out of order, um, Her Excellency, the Ambassador of France, um, Madame Menonche, to come and give us her tribute. Thank you. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, First, allow me to express my sincere condolences to Dr. Chris Kirubi's children, my Miriam, Robert, Andrew, and the broader family for the loss 
of our dear father. Indeed, we all of us lost a friend today. France also lost a friend. We indeed all know the success of Dr. Kirubis on the business front. Kenya has lost a true entrepreneur with a vision of the development of his country. The French business community has lost a partner with whom it successfully developed trade and joint investment. The French group BIC has been mentioned. I will not develop on this. But Chris Kirubi was more than that. He was also a man very committed in using his influence to promote other causes, as he did in fighting the AIDS HIV scourge. The international community, and I know that some of us are in the room today, including the former UN coordinator, the international community will also remember Dr. Chris Kirubi as the chairman of Kenya's HIV AIDS Business Council and for his nomination as special advisor to the UN AIDS Executive Director at a time of urgency. Allow me to share briefly my personal but too short experience with Dr. Kirubi. I remember my first engagement with him. It was at the very beginning of my mandate in Kenya while preparing President Macron's visit. We had a meeting on the 15th of January 2019 at his house in a very intimate atmosphere, which was unusual for me as a, an, an envoy. It was a good point. I found him a warm personality, willing to engage with me in his vision on various aspects from cultural, political, and economic. But the reason why I have a special memory of this meeting is because our discussion was interrupted by news of the terrorist attack at the Tuzit Hotel. The conversation took a different turn. Just like every Kenyan following the happenings, we were so saddened and deeply impacted by the news. We spent the whole afternoon waiting for news and sharing our reviews on the situation. It made our relationship different from the start. I also remembered him facing with courage his illness. I was so appreciative while much later, despite his health concerns at the time, he insisted in joining us at the French Embassy for our National Day. On many occasions, he showed his commitment towards establishing deep economic relationship with France. Dr. Kirubi was also a member of the Alliance Française board, a position he held with the likes of the late Dr. Jane Kiano. He was very keen on the cultural development of the artistic space of the Alliance Française and through his radio, Capital FM, promoted some of the many events held at the Cultural Center. On Friday 15th, May 2015, at the residence of France, the French government bestowed upon Dr. Christophe Kirubi France's highest decoration, the Legion of Honor, for his lifetime contribution towards youth development and development as a whole, as well as his commitment to economic and cultural rapprochement between Kenya and France. We will miss him indeed. But we are confident that the partnership he anchored will continue after him as a legacy. Merci, Chris.
Uh, the next to pay the tribute is from DHL, uh, Mr. Andrew Mutuma. To Robert, Miriam, Andrew, to your immediate family, uh, relatives, ladies and gentlemen, a good morning to you all. I never referred to Dr. Chris Kirubi by his name, because I never believe in Africa you ever refer to your father by his name. So I always refer to him fondly as chairman. Nothing gave me or gave um, the chairman more pleasure, with of course the exception of working on his next uh, business uh, venture. Um, sorry. Then inspiring and impacting his networks, those around him with lessons uh, from his life experiences. I met Dr. Chris Kirobi seven years ago when I joined EHL Express, and he had insisted that he must recruit the next head of the business personally. Uh, it was quite intimidating the first time I met him. Uh, but these first impressions would quickly be dispelled, and that you would see he was a kind and gentle giant, firm but fair, and honest to the hilt. I was privileged to not only work closely with him, but to also learn and engage with him in a personal way that will forever have an impact on my life. What seemed to make uh, Dr. Kirib stand out was his uncanny ability to quickly understand business strategies and approaches from start to finish. He relied on his numerous years of experience and gut feelings and put his personal guarantee behind every venture he pursued. Chairman brought a lot of integrity and knowledge of the industry to me and he looked at things objectively. He had a really good feeling for the bumps on the road and how to overcome them. As a dear friend, I remember when I went to him and I said to him that I was getting married. Uh, he looked at his calendar and he cleared his whole calendar on a specific day and said he would be there. And on the particular day, he came and spent the whole day with my family and I. What was really interesting is when he was leaving, he came up to my wife and asked for permission to leave. And it is only upon her saying it is okay, you could leave, that he left. As a dear friend, I will fondly, I have very much fond memories of him as a faithful mentor, father, figure, and advisor. He valued honesty, and he kept his word, and always spoke the truth, as many of you can testify. A lot can be said about his achievements, but I do believe that the most important memory we have of the chairman is the impact he had on our lives and in our hearts. If you spend moments with him, you would experience his gentleness, his teaching spirit, and with all his plans, he would always offer his time, which was quite valuable. As you can see, he had a lot to do, but he still offered that time to be a friend and offer words of advice. Chairman, thank you for the moments we spent together. Thank you for confiding with me on many things in life and for teaching me so much uh, in the moments we spent at the fireplace. They were God sent and I'm eternally grateful. Thank you for challenging me and I believe all of us seated here to do more with our lives, to use our gifts, talents and everything we have to make the most of our lives. You lived and made your life story a bestseller. So on behalf of DHL Express Kenya and the management team that's with me here, and also on behalf of my dear wife, Liz, um, who met him severally, and my family, I would like to extend my deepest condolences. May he rest in peace, but 
I pray that you would rest at the feet of Jesus. Because in his presence, there is such fullness of joy. He was a joyful man. I wouldn't wish him anything else. Thank you. Uh, the next tribute is uh, representing Kenya Association of Manufacturers, uh, Polly Kapigade. Andrew, Marianne, Gina, Mara, Robert, the entire esteemed family of Chairman Dr. Chris Kirubi, all the friends of Chris Kirubi who have gathered here, who include all the esteemed leaders of our government. Accept my personal condolences and accept the condolences of the entire fraternity of Kenya Association of Manufacturers and the Advisory Council of the Kenya Association of Manufacturers where we served with Chairman Dr. Chris Kirubi. And I'm very pleased to say that Mary Ann Kirubi has now joined as a director in the footsteps of that as a director of Kenya Association of Manufacturers. We bring our condolences and with great sadness, with real great sadness, I stand before you today to celebrate an iconic life. Chairman was a great friend. We had a special bond. He was an astute leader. By saying he was a great friend, he invited me to take a ring seat, a ringside seat in his life. He was a confidant, he was my mentor, and for those of you who may not know, I served as managing director in his businesses for 10 years, close to 10 years. My fondest memory of Chairman Kirubi as a friend was a trip we took to Mexico where he went to receive an award that displayed his excellence of the number one best manufacturer of big products in the entire world, and that was Hako Industries back in 2010. The impact he made, the address he made, will be, I will not have enough time to be able to explain to the audience here today. But even as we grieve, let us hang on to the memories of him, the memories of Chairman, ranging from his amazing and charismatic character, infectious laughter, and astute leadership. I'm a graduate of his Institute of Advanced Hindsight and Institute of Advanced Foresight. Chairman was full of magic and chairman was full of logic. As a leader, he taught me the art of business. And that art of business, which he continued to teach even as we were in KM, he would always say, Polycarp, treat customers as human beings with needs, not human beings with wallets. If you do that, your business will grow. Polycarp, please remember that business is a simple cycle. 
from the time you put a shilling to buy raw materials and packaging and convert it to finished goods to the time you sell, you recover that shilling back with a profit. He was so simple in his teaching. Those are lessons I continue to apply today in my corporate life. Dr. Kirubi was a trailblazer in shaping Kenya's manufacturing sector and the business community in its entirety. Many within the manufacturing sector echoed of his outspoken, fearless character during his term as the chairman of Kenya Association of Manufacturers. He was a great partner to the Right Honorable Raila Odinga when the Grand Coalition government started the Prime Minister's Roundtable. And you can attest to his candor and his fearlessness in those sessions. We can also attest to his commitment to make this country better as witnessed by his dedicated mentorship and contribution, which we have heard about in all the tributes which were paid at home. Dr. Kirubi served as the chairman of the association between 1999 and 2000, a time when he led the manufacturing sector in advocating for the policies that created a very conducive business environment for local industries to thrive. He was particularly, specifically, he achieved several things in his tenure. Number one, he defended local manufacturers against onslaught of cheap imports and the impact of liberalization of the economy and advocating for a level playing field. He decried the effect of counterfeits to the health of Kenyans and the impact of the vice on genuine locally manufactured products. Many of you would know that I eventually ended up becoming the chairman of the Kenya Association of Man uh, becoming chairman of, of the Kenya Anti-Counterfeit Agency when it was set up, and that was thanks to Dr. Kirubi. He also advocated for the diversification of our power generation mix, following a power rationing program that disrupted manufacturing processes and threatened the closure of industries and consequently job losses. Furthermore, he continued to support the association even after his term as chair came to an end as an advisor and through investments in local manufacturing. I'm aware through Filias Wakiaga that he even found time to attend a board meeting and an advisory council meeting in the company of Marianne not too long ago. This country is indebted to Dr. Kirubi in many ways. And individuals such as myself are indebted to Dr. Kirubi in many ways. He trusted us. He trusted me before I could trust myself. He built me. We worked together. He taught me. He was my mentor. He was my friend. He was my brother. And I bring sincere condolences to the family. My children, Kamau, Muihaki, Shiro, and the mother, Catherine, they all called chairman, Uncle Chairman Chris Kirubi. And we grieve with you. We cry with you. We shed tears with you. And the love he extended to us, we shall continue to extend to you. When I was done in my career and I moved on to other things, Chris continued to bless me. And as we lose him, perhaps it may be worthwhile to let you know how many things we did with Chris. When Nairobi was, when it was impossible to do business in Nairobi, it was Chris who came up with the idea of making sure that Nairobi goes back to the national government politically. It was Kirubi who designed the Sonko Igafe ticket. <laughs> and we were very glad with that design and he gave me to execute and we did not fail. But that mission did not succeed as it was intended, but Dr. Kirubi was unique in his thinking. Let me close by saying, he was a genius by birth. A tough guy by instinct. An elegant man by taste. And the most humble, amazing human being I've ever encountered. I'm distinctly honored and highly privileged to have known Dr. Chairman Christopher Kirubi. Thank you very much.
Uh, next, I'll uh, bring to the podium somebody who doesn't need any introduction from International House Limited. Anybody who went to see Chris Kirubi and knows Aisha. Aisha, please come. Assalamu alaikum. Familia ya marehemu, watoto wake, wajukuu zake, ndugu zake, watoto wa ndugu zake na jamaa wote wa marehemu na wapapole tena. Wageni mashuhuri kutoka serikali yetu tukufu. Mawaziri wetu na nyote wanahisa wa kampuni yetu International House Limited wakurugenzi wa kampuni yetu International House Limited na wakurugenzi wa makampuni zetu zengine zote na waamkua tena hamujamboni leo mimi niko hapa kuwakilisha kampuni yetu ya International House Limited. Nikisema International House Limited nasema kuwa hapo bwana Chris Kirubi ndipo alipokuwa akitekeleza majukumu yote ya shughuli zake ambazo sina haja kuzitaja zimetajwa zitatajwa na zitataja tena siku zote Mungu amweke mahali pema Na to, niko hapa kuwakilisha International House Limited wafanyikazi wote wanatoa rambi rambi zao zote kwa familia Hatuwezi kuwa hapa sote mimi nimewakilisha kwa kuwa nilianza na bwana Kirubi mwaka wa elfu moja mia tisa themanini na tatu nikiwa mdogo kiumri sijaolewa sijapata watoto kwa sasa nikiwaambia nimesimama hapa hata kijukuu ninacho na yeye amepata hata wajukuu Mungu atuweke wajukuu zetu na watoto zetu kwa hivyo nilimjua kwa miaka mingi na tumefanya kazi toka tukiwa wadogo na mpaka tumepanuka kadiri mnavyosikia yametajwa mengi sina haja ya kutaja leo basi kwa ufupi kutoka International House Limited tumekuja hapa kutoa rambi rambi zetu na niko na shairi kutoka kwangu kama mfanyikazi wake wa zamani na kutoka kwa wafanyikazi wetu wote wa International House Limited nimeleta salamu zao hapa kaeni muzisikilize kwa makini na natumai pia wenzangu wanasikiliza nikitoa ujumbe huu kwa bwana wetu mpendo wetu daktari wetu bwana Chris Kirubi kwa heri Chris kwa heri ni Mola ameamua sisi hatuna hiari hatuwezi kukosoa habari yake ya siri hekima na uhodari kwa hayo ulibobea bidii zako na ari sote tulijionea daima tutakariri mema ulotuachia katika yako safari wengi umewainua sitajiri sifakiri wanakutilia dua na ulioyafanya mazuri mbele atakuokoa 
Amina Rabbi Amina nenda salama bosi wangu Mungu akupe hatua njema akuweke pema peponi Mwenyezi Mungu awape subra familia yake yote watoto wake mama yao watoto wa ndugu zake na wengine wote hatuwezi kuwataja yeye alikuwa ni mtu wetu wote kwa hivyo shukurani zetu tunazitoa na Mola akamweke mahali pema kapumzike bosi wangu najua ni magumu lakini Mola atatupa nguvu na subira zisokuwa na kifani asanteni The next tribute is from uh, Steve Miner from Hako Industries. Good afternoon. Uh, my name is Mohaki Bashira. I will read the tribute from Hako Industries on behalf of Steve Miner. Robert, our boss Marianne, Andrew, the children, all protocols observed. This is a tribute from the management committee and the staff of Hako Industries. In the year 1974, in the coastal town of Mombasa, Dr. Christopher J. Kirubi founded Hako Industries. And over the last 47 years, he steered the company from its humble beginnings as a single product manufacturer to a leading player in the FMCG industry in East Africa. The journey over the last 47 years has been one lined with immense success achieved through perseverance, dedication, and commitment. This has seen Hako Industries develop and establish market leadership with its own brands in the personal and home care categories. The brands most closest to Chairman's Heart were Miyadi, Amara, and Ashanti Ki. Chairman was an innovator by excellence, especially when it came to personal and hair care categories. He loved beautiful things. He loved making women look beautiful. And he was passionate about perfectly good grooming for men. His mind worked in a very gifted way. He had the unique ability of being able to dream and vividly articulate his vision, as well as to follow through with the teams on execution. This is what made Hako Industries capable of innovating and launching many new products. Chairman's love for good sense and well-moisturized skin led Hako Industries to launching Amara, a brand that only eight years after launch is now the number two skincare brand in East Africa. Hands down beating legacy brands that have been in the market for many years. He would come across a fragrance or a body cream he liked on his many international travels and he would excitedly bring wigs and weaves very well with women. That is one category to date we never managed to convince chairman we could enter no matter how lucrative it was. Out of this love for African hair, he started working with leading hair trichologists around the world and formed Miyadi, and that was the first brand that came out of the Hako Lab in 2008, and today is a leading brand. With the onset of the natural hair care trends, he visualized and conceptualized Ashanti Q, a brand we launched in 2019 December even as he battled with his illness. He called African women queens, and he wanted only the very best for them. And that is how Ashanti Q was named after an ancient African ethnic group in modern-day Ghana, and then after the queens of Africa. He never tired throughout the innovation process, 
and he will sit with the teams for hours on end. He would debate packaging designs. He would look at fragrances. He would test the products himself and give feedback. And he always had out-of-the-world suggestions on what we could do with our brands. He thought big and he acted bold. He always opened doors for Hako Industries in the companies he had connections to. And he made many phone calls to introduce our sales teams to the decision-making people in those companies. An example being Majid al a close partner of Hako Industries to date. Chairman was a big believer in the Big Four agenda, specifically on manufacturing, and his continued determination was to drive HACO towards sustainable local manufacturing and translated to growth of local partners in distribution, in supply of raw materials and manufacturing inputs, as well as sales and marketing. This value chain alone has created thousands of jobs and has contributed to the economic growth of our country and our continent. It was his firm belief that Hako Industries would deliver on the ambition set out in our vision, which is to be the most preferred company with a commanding presence in every household by 2030. We are committed to building a lasting legacy for our beloved chairman by achieving this and so much more in the next 47 years and even beyond. Chairman had a pulse on all areas of the business and you could not fool him about what was happening in HACO or in the FMCG industry. Every single time he came to the factory, there was a palpable excitement and staff members would be so happy to see him and to have a chat and a photo op, of course next to the CK1 car. He knew every single detail about how the factory lines ran, how the financials of the business were, how the sales and marketing in initiatives were being run. He was present at every single moment. Chairman appointed his beloved daughter, Mrs. Marianne Musangi, to be our managing director in January 2019. Jesus Christ, who was crucified for you, bring you freedom and peace. May you see your Redeemer face to face. Rest in peace, Chairman. Uh, the next tribute is from Smart Solutions, uh, Harrison uh, Muiru. To the immediate family, Robert, Marianne, Andrew, distinguished guests, good afternoon, church. I'm here today to present this tribute on behalf of Smart Applications, one of the companies that he passionately loved, and words cannot truly express the fullness of Dr. Chris Kirubi, a man we fondly referred to as the chairman. His booming voice, larger than life, persona, courage, boldness, love for this nation, great mind and aggressive business drive were much more than the words remarkable can describe. He had an immense gift in getting people together towards a common cause for humanity, solving problems and generating value for society and winning. At Smart Applications, the chairman came into our lives when we were at one of our lowest moments, going through the motions of a typical startup that had a concept which we fully believed in, but which the market had not fully accepted. Then comes chairman. And in the true God-given gift he had and a strong passion 
and belief for the youth and technology. He saw an opportunity in smart that others did not see. And he saw a future in our young minds that could scale to be the leading technology company not only in Kenya, but in the world. Chairman never missed a bit. He put his mind, his heart, his time, his brand, his money, his character in smart applications. And as he did with all his ventures, he rolled his sleeves, sat and worked with us, and daily challenged us to do better. But that was not all about Chairman. He deeply cared for us and had the heart to ask us about our families. Many times he would pull a chair next to us in the office and share kind words and advise us individually when he got to know what we were going through. He had a nickname for almost everyone and would not hesitate to bring the whole room to laughter in a manner that would brighten up everyone and yet in the same moment teach very solid business lessons and instill wisdom in our young lives. From a team of barely seven employees and a small 70 square meter office in 2007, through his visionary leadership, guidance and unrelenting support, we now stand at nine countries serving over 1.5 million lives in access to healthcare and employing over 200 brilliant young men and women. That is the belief he had in the youth. You see, what Dr. Chris Kirubi valued most was a transformation in people. He made all his staff feel like his immediate family and clearly made it known that everybody plays an important role. Don't work for me, work with me, he always said. He did his best to pull everyone together to build companies and made everyone feel a sense of ownership. His philosophy of hard work and big thinking is what is embodied in our vision, which is to create a smarter society of people through world-class innovative solutions and inspiring a world of convenience. Chairman had a vision to realize a fraud-free, easily accessible by all and fully automated healthcare sector. We intend to fulfill this promise not only in Kenya, but across Africa and into the world. He is a man that we shall dearly miss as a business, as individuals. He purposely trained us, engaging with us at all levels, almost on a daily basis, even when he was unwell, to build us into strong leaders. And indeed, through his philosophy, we are a solid company that is rearing to achieve even more greatness into the future. To Robert Kirubi, to Mary Ann, to Andrew Musangi, the grandchildren and immediate family, we pass our most sincere condolences. May the Lord comfort you. May the Lord renew your strength. May God rest Chairman's soul in internal peace. Fare thee well, Chairman, till we meet again. Thank you. The next tribute is from uh, Frida Idris of Capital FM. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, Marianne, Robert, Mr. Musangi, all protocols observed. My name is Farida Idris, and I'm here to read out the tribute from Capital FM. At Capital FM, Dr. Chris Kirubi was not only our chairman, but he was a fellow staff member because he had a DJ show in the morning that was very popular in Kenya. 
Dr. DJ CK, as is popularly known among our listeners and fans, he was passionate about his radio station. He was a down-to-earth man who mingled with everyone to an extent we associated him with more of a co-worker than a chairman and a co-owner. The outpouring messages and condolences that we have received from our listeners, locally and internationally, is a testimony of the lives he touched and transformed. As management, from Grace Nyambura, Danny Muni, Bernard Momani, David Muba, and the rest of the Capital FM staff, we have lost a visionary leader, but we are grateful for the skills he impacted in us on making the business-oriented decisions to take the company forward. But even as we mourn the loss of chairman, we also celebrate his achievements and the employment opportunities he has created not only at Capital FM, making us one of the most valuable media brands on the continent, but also in other sectors of the economy. We have no doubt that with the support of our listeners, our partners, and our advertisers, the company remains solid and we will continue to grow in fulfillment of Dr. Kirubi's long-term vision. Dr. DJ CK has rested, but his vision and legacy lives on for generations to come. Fare thee well, Dr. DJ CK. Rest well, Chairman. Thank you very much. So, so finally, from the, the last one from the corporate side is uh, Mr. James Moria of Centum. Thank you. The family of Dr. Chris Kirubi our guests who are gathered here today, it's my honor and duty to present the message of condolences from the Centum Fraternity. We are so many that we had to have a service for ourselves yesterday, and we'll be sharing with you our video for you to see what has been sharing and the outpouring of emotion, because Chris poured himself to that organization, and that organization was a platform where he practices faith. I also want to share my own condolences and the condolences of my family, Chris has been a leader and a mentor to us, and I've had the privilege of working with him for 20 years and for achieving great things in that period. I have a tribute that I would like to share with you based on the work that we've done with Dr. Chris Kirubi over the last 20 years. Some people mistakenly think that Christopher John Kirubi found God during his illness. The truth is that Chris's life and work has been a testament of a man who the Almighty God has blessed with incredible skills and capacity and who lived his life fulfilling God's command of carrying on with the work of converting his extraordinary talents into new creation. Chris is a man who had heeded Paul's advice in 1 John 3.18. Dear children, let us not love with words or speech, but with actions and in truth. And those are the actions that you've heard of for the last one week. You also lived the teachings of James II, 14 to 20. What use is it, my brethren, if a man says he has faith, but he has no works? Faith without works is useless. Chris in his works created opportunity for thousands to find an outlet for the talents that God has vested in them. Chris took Genesis 1, 27 to heart. He believed he was a child of God, created in his image, and that is where he drew his confidence from. He also lived by Genesis 1.28 and took the abundant blessings God had given him and obeyed to his last breath the command from God to be fruitful and increase in number. That is Chris's legacy. So though he had four children, Robert and his wife Kim, Marianne and her husband Andrew, and five grandchildren, he was a father of a great nation, of great men and women that he has mentored, men and women across the world. Chris's extraordinary gift was that of a visionary, a creator, 
and an enabler of others. That is a blessing he applied through his long life, and today we celebrate the fruits of his life's work. A lot has been written and said this week on the fruits of this great man. I had the good fortune of working closely with him for 20 years, and I drew many lessons on the character of the man that bore those fruits. In Matthew 7:16, it says you will know them by their fruits. This morning, I would like to speak about some of the lessons I've distilled on Chris's character. The first one was Chris was a man of extraordinary faith. In fulfilling his purpose, Chris was a man whose life was grounded in extraordinary faith in his ability to triumph over any odds. Chris surely had lived and lived the advice of Jesus in Matthew 21, 21. Truly, I tell you, if you have faith and do not doubt, not only can you do what has, was done to the victory, but also you can say to this mountain, go through yourself into the sea and it will be done. And there's a lot of testaments that are being given of what this great man of, what great this man of faith did. It was his faith that gave him the fortitude to fight the disease for four years, overcoming all the odds that have been cited by doctors and experts. Second, Chris was a dreamer. Chris was a man of extraordinary vision and resilience. He believed, like Paul in Romans 4.17, that in faith and God's will, and God's will, he could call those things that are not as if they are. That was a faith that underpinned his vision to dream about building new cities. Examples are Vipingo at the, in the coast, two rivers in Nairobi, Palmarina in Uganda, all of which he dreamed that he could do and he did simultaneously. The odds and the risks were never really relevant. One of the things he mentioned to me many times was that obstacles are those frightful things you see when you take your eyes off the goal. Chris's eyes are always fixed on his goals, and obstacles and risks are mere inconveniences to be overcome. The third one was that Chris was a man of courage, a man who respected himself and others, and who also demanded to be respected, a man who had the courage to pursue his vision no matter how daunting the odds were, confident that any trials were only temporary, and that you would in the end conquer. Chris believed that he could overcome any situation. He knew that faith and abundance could not exist in an environment of fear and lack of faith. When I visited him in the United States in late 2017, in hospital at a time when he was critically ill, he asked me to bring him designs for the house that he was constructing. This was a time when many people would be putting their affairs in order. One of the evenings when we were with him, while praying with him, he asked that I read for him Mark 6, verse 5 to 6. That's a verse where Jesus went to his home village. And it says he could not do any miracles there, except lay his hands on a few sick people and heal them. He was amazed by their lack of faith. Chris told me that miracles are not performed in an environment of lack of faith, and that's why he was building his house, even in the midst of his sickness because he believed he was going to overcome it. Chris was a mentor. Chris was a man who worked hard to develop other leaders. Like Moses mentored a young Joshua, Chris has mentored several generations of leaders. Many of whom are in the church today, many of whom have spoken, many of whom are following online today. Chris was a student of the biblical Moses. Ask any leader that Chris has mentored, and they will tell you that they have experienced at least three of these attributes. Chris empowered people and gave them authority, no matter how young. Chris provided his mentees with experience and opportunity to apply themselves. You've heard for yourselves the testimonies that have been given. Chris gave all those he mentored encouragement and affirmation. Our challenges as his mentees, as those who have been the beneficiaries, is to do unto others as Chris has done unto us, and to speak life into those who we have had the opportunity to lead so that we too can be fruitful and multiply. The fifth, Chris was generous. Chris was extraordinarily generous. He multiplied that which God blessed him, and he gave it out freely. I was privy to many of his donations and contributions, which were either anonymous or that he requested be kept confidential. The sixth one was Chris was an eagle. Chris was an eagle who flew at high altitude, and kept the company of other eagles, and you've had them. And he sought them. He soared way above small noise birds like parrots, 
sparrows and crows. His seeming thick skin was perhaps because he was out of the hearing range of the noisy chirping of parrots and the crows in this life. He was a true ego who soared way above the chattering parrots. And that is probably why many people never really understood him. Seventh, Chris was a love of knowledge. Chris loved knowledge. He educated himself to the highest possible level. He constantly challenged his assumptions and was constantly innovating. He was a man surrounded by books in his office, at home, and in his bags. He carried books wherever he went, and he bought books wherever we traveled. Finally, he enabled many people to acquire knowledge. And I've seen Governor King there, and he can give you testimony to the 250 people who have students who have gotten scholarships in the Pingo courtesy of Chris. Chris heeded the advice in Hosea 4.6. My people are destroyed from lack of knowledge. Finally, Chris, Chris loved life, and he was not anxious. Chris ate life with a big spoon. In an empire as large as his, it was inevitable that at any given time, one or two of his companies would be facing one challenge or another. Chris had reasons to be anxious. However, Chris was never anxious even in the face of seemingly daunting and overwhelming personal challenges. Chris lived Paul's advice in Philippians 4.6, do not be anxious about any, ev anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. And the peace of God which transcends all understanding will guard your hearts and your mind. This is my honest and faithful account of this great man that we lay to rest. Matthew 7.16 has given us the skill to weigh the worth of a man and says you shall know them by their fruits. It goes on to say that every good tree bears good fruit. Chris has borne good fruit. He was a good man. He was a great man. He was a man of impact. A creator, a man who fulfilled his purpose, a man who employed the extraordinary talents that God had given him in obedience of God's command to be fruitful. The great writer and poet George Bernard Shaw must have had men like Chris in mind when he penned that immortal poem, A Splendid Torch. This is a true joy of life, the being used for mighty purpose, the being a force of nature instead of a selfish clod of ailments and grievances, complaining that the world will not devote itself to making you happy. I'm of, I'm of the opinion that my life belongs to the whole community. And as long as I live, it is my privilege to do for it whatever I can. I want to be thoroughly used up when I die. For the harder I work, the more I live. I rejoice in life for its own sake. Life is no brief candle for me. It is a sort of splendid torch which I got hold of for a moment. And I want to make it burn as brightly as possible before handing it on to future generations. Chris was thoroughly used up by the time he rested. His life belonged to the whole community. He worked to the end. He obeyed God's command and was fruitful. His faith shines through in his works and the lives of those whom he has touched. Christopher John Kirubi has fulfilled his purpose and we thank God for his long and fruitful life. He did not do this alone. And on his behalf, I thank all those who worked closely with him, those who loved him and enabled him to achieve all that he did in his lifetime. I thank God for having given me the rare opportunity to directly share with Chris what he meant to me and to personally thank him for all that he has been and done in my life. Christopher John Kirubi now belongs to the ages. Fare thee well, our leader, our friend, our mentor. Fare thee well till we meet again. Glad to know I'm an eagle and not a chirping bird because of the time we spent with Chris. We are going to go now to um, the various governments that have sent their tributes. His Excellency Alan Ganu, the Minister of Foreign Affairs, Regional Integration and International Trade from the Republic of Mauritius, the Embassy of Mauritius here, the um, uh, Ambassador Jabor Ali Al Dosri, the Embassy of the state of Qatar in Nairobi. We received messages from the Embassy of Costa Rica, 
in Kenya, the High Commission from the, of the Republic of South Africa, the Consulate of the Republic of Cameroon, and the Embassy of Oman. Uh, the next um, tribute will be from the former president of Ghana, uh, John Kufour, and it will be done by Angela Jimo, if she can come. Hi. So I think there is a, a little misunderstanding. I think the Consulate of Ghana is here to read um, something for Ghana. This note here is actually from the current president of Ghana, Nana Akufuado, who asked me to personally de deliver this note to Marianne. And on arrival yesterday, Marianne asked that I open it today and read it to her. So this is actually from the current president of Ghana, Nana Adudankwa Akufuado, a personal handwritten note to the children of Chris Kirubi. So I'll read it with your permission. So dear Marianne and Robert, I've asked my friend Angela Tremating to bring you this brief note to express to you my condolences and those of all his friends in Ghana at his death. He was a fine man and a good African. He will be sorely missed by all who knew him. Best wishes and, and warm regards. Nana Adudankwa Akufuado. So. So. so from my side, I am a personal friend of Chris Kirubi. I had the privilege of knowing Chris when I lived in Nairobi from 2013 for two years. And when Chris and I met, we got along like house on fire. He took me as his daughter, and he invested so much in me. Chris told me, by the time you leave in Nairobi, you need to be a golfer. And he made sure I learned how to play golf before I left Nairobi. Chris told me, you need to polish up on your negotiation skills because you are going to go far and you will need it in your career. And he worked on that with me. Today, I'm standing here to say farewell to my friend, my rock, my oasis. What really hurts me is that when he was sick, I was very far away, and I couldn't come and be with Chris his very last days. But I know he's resting well. So today, Chris, I want to say rest well, my friend, and we will keep on living your legacy that you left behind. So Marianne and Robert, thank you, Andrew. Thank you for sharing your father with me. He was everything to me. And I thank you for everything you did for me when I was living in Nairobi. Thank you. Uh, so the next uh, tribute is from um, the government of um, Ghana and Mrs. Doris Richter, who is the deputy head of mission at the Ghanaian uh, High Commission. Okay, so, um, so let's uh, move on to, to the next. I'd like to, um, first of all, recognize um, the leaders that are here. Uh, I can't call everybody, so I will um, start by calling uh, Senator Wetangula to give uh, a few words, uh, and then we will move on from there. So, Senator, please come. Good afternoon, church. The family of our fallen brother, friend, and hero, 
Dr. Chris Kirubi, colleagues from the political wing, captains of industry, diplomats, fellow Kenyans. I stand here to pay tribute to a great man. I knew Chris Kirubi way back in 1985. I was having lunch in a restaurant and he was sitting next to me. And we started a conversation and there I learned that him and I went to the same school, friend school Kamsinga, a giant of many schools in Western Kenya. And he also went to another school in Western Kenya called Kolanya. Thereafter, Chris became a close friend. But as I sat there listening to many tributes, I've realized that I didn't know so much about the length and breadth of the successes, impact of Chris on our country. He goes to his maker as truly a man who left this country better than he found it. He's touched many people, he's touched many institutions. I remember there was a time we were regenerating Kamsinga as a school. And Chris called me and sent me a very generous donation to take to the school. And the school has benefited immensely from that donation. When I was the foreign minister of this country, Chris called me once and said, my friend, I have invested in Ethiopia and I'm having some difficulties that I need to be sorted out. I told him, come to the office in the morning. I go to the office at 6.30 so that we can discuss and see what to do. When I arrived at my office at 6.30, Chris was there waiting for me. He had arrived way ahead of me. That is how studious he was to getting what he wanted to do. We sat in my office. I placed a phone call to the then Prime Minister of Ethiopia, Mele Zenawi. And Mele told me, Moses, if it is somebody that you know well and is having any difficulty with my government, come over with him. The next day, Chris and I were in Addis. We had dinner with the Prime Minister. And I believe the issues that Hako Industries was encountering in Addis were resolved. That is how practical Chris was. So as we come here today, we learn one lesson. That Kenyans can truly, in working hard, build Kenya. And Kenyans working hard can change the lives of fellow Kenyans. The last issue I want to say about Chris is his friendship with people beyond the borders of our country. Chris was a very close friend, not just as an honorary consular of Ghana, but of the former president of Ghana, John Kufuo, who also happens to be my close friend. Every time I have spoken to Dr. John Kufuo on phone, he has asked me about Chris. He's told me how Chris used to visit him. And you Kenyans may recall when we had election difficulties in 2007, 2008, Dr. John Kufuo was the chairman of the AU. And he came here 
to bring sanity to the warring sides of our politics. When he was here, he was permanently in company of Chris Kruby. I used to join them at the Intercon for a cup of tea, for a dinner. And you could see the chemistry between the two. And John Kufuo said, if Kenya has one man who has got a knack and an eye for entrepreneurship, it is this man, Chris. And you can imagine that was a president, the chair of AU, but they were on first name terms with Chris. Chris called him John, he called Chris, Chris. That is the camaraderie of our fallen brother that he touched others. Fare thee well, my brother Chris, Andrew, your family, and the entire Chris family, the Musangis, if they are here, those are my brothers from Western. We stand here to say, may the good Lord rest the soul of Chris in eternal peace. That is the journey that we all are going to end up. And those who have spoken here, please carry on his legacy, hold the industries he has built, hold the enterprises he has developed so that they can continue building our economy so that this country can move to the next level. Thank you. Uh, next, I will call uh, Honorable Mudavadi to come and say a few words. Um, Robert, Marianne, Andrew, and the entire Kirubi family. Good afternoon friends and relatives of Chris. First, kindly accept my condolences and those of my wife, Tessie, on this loss. I will speak very briefly because a lot has been said. But I'd like to say that Chris Kirubi was extremely candid. You know, when you're talking to him and you have an idea or an opinion, he will not tell you it's a bad opinion. He will tell you it's a stupid opinion. That is how candid he was. Because when you say it's a bad opinion, he's being polite. But Chris was straight. He would shoot from the hip. And during my time as Minister for Finance, I shared a lot with Chris because he had the pulse of the economy at his fingertips. He had the pulse of the political situation. And for the five years that I read the budget of this country as Minister for Finance. One of the key people that you would have to seek advice from so that you know whether you are getting it right or not was Chris Kirubi. He would always be there to advise so that the policies and the direction you take would make sense to business and to the country and to the economy. That was Chris. He was also politically astute. On one occasion, we went together with him and the late President Moy for a delegation, as a delegation led by the President, to the British Confederation of Industries to talk about the progress that we were making as Kenya because we had just come out of a very difficult economic situation 
where the aid had been curtailed, inflation was soaring, and things were difficult for the people of Kenya. So at this conference at the CBI, I did what I could do as a minister for finance, and my boss, the president, was there, and Chris was part of the delegation as a business person. And one of the things that he observed was that the participants of the CBI kept on heaping some praise and they were not directing it at the head of delegation or the government, but saying the Minister for Finance has done a good thing. So at lunchtime, Chris Kirubi took me for lunch. He said, forget about going lunch with your, bo with your boss. Come with me. And he told me, let me tell you something. When you go back in the afternoon, change tact. The praise must not be to you, but to your boss. I have been with these people for some time. Mind your steps, mind your language. And indeed, when we went back in the afternoon, I changed tact. And he said, now we'll go far. Every time, remember when your boss is there, do not try to outshine your boss. That was Chris Kirubi at a very personal level. So I stand here to bid farewell to a good man, to a patriot, and to the family. May you find service under God's care. Asante Nisana. Next, uh, allow me to invite the Honorable Stephen Kalonzo Musioka to come and say a few words. To the family of uh, Late brother Chris Kirubi, dear colleagues, our sister Teresa Warimu and the Fem family, we praise God for this wonderful sanctuary. You two have come from far. Fellow mourners, uh, on a light note, I realize I'm not the only one who uses the word stupid. <laughs> Chris Kirubi would give it to Musalia. And I remember it was not even Chris alone. Once uh, a famous president of the United States, Bill Clinton, fashioned his whole campaign theme on what he called the economy stupid. But we are here to celebrate a wonderful Kenyan, a statesman. We can talk about Chris Kirubi for a very, very long time. But I want to agree with what I read this morning, a good tribute by one of his good friends. I don't know that John Gumi is in the house. I really enjoyed reading what he wrote about a special tribute to our friend, the late Chris Kirubi. In fact, it traces a history of the captains of industry from independence. Names like Sir Ernest Vassi, Bruce Mackenzie, and how Chris Kirubi and uh, had occasion to understudy them and promised that he would do better than them. And listening to Mori of Centum Industries, um, I don't know whether Centum is industries or everything. And, and look at the skyrocketing two rivers 
and Vipingo and all, and not just in Kenya and the region, then we have reason to celebrate Chris as one of our main captains of industry. But yet, not a diehard capitalist, in fact is what I would call a coarse capitalist, a social capitalist, would create employment opportunities for citizens and the African continent, in fact truly a pan-Africanist, one who without showing hatred would want to compete with the West in real terms and grow his country's economy. Therefore, as we bid uh, farewell to him, I personally remember him, came to my house in the company, this was in January 2008, in the company of two other great men, Peter Munga of Equity and James Mwangi, who was then the CEO. And then Chris joined them. The mission was simple. It was to tell me, you have to act in a manner that saves our country. This, as you remember, was following the post-election violence of 2007 and 2008. And that is how he became our country's 10th vice president, a negotiated position. Thanks to men who had the courage to come and tell me, Kalonzo, you're being stupid. <laughs> You must save your country. Well, I must go and say query to Chris tomorrow at the village because he remembers his village. And indeed, as Moria told us, that was a vision. Chris has just faded away to glory. And thank your sister Teresa for praying with him the moment before he went for that operation. And his testimony now is clear. He's going to be with the Lord. May he so rest in everlasting peace. Amen. Uh, next, allow me uh, to invite um, the right, former Right Honorable Prime Minister, uh, Raila Odinga. Robert, Marianne, and the rest of the family of our friend Chris, and of fellow mourners who have come today. Good morning. I'm the one who is not appropriately dressed because I've just come from Mombasa. I hope I'm okay. I raised to come and be here this morning because of my friend Chris Kirubi. And a lot has already been said about him, about his life, about his uh, businesses, his contribution to prosperity of our country. So if I went that direction, I think I'm going to be flogging a dead horse. Chris Kirubi is a good friend of mine. We met for the first time in 1970 when he was working with Kinatko, which was then a big transporting company in the country. I went to see a cousin of mine who was then the technical manager of Kinatko. This cousin is the one who introduced me to Chris. This was my first encounter. The second would be when he was in the company of his brother-in-law, Michael Kinyang, who was the husband of Elizabeth. And uh, they were two together. Michael tried to introduce me and said, no, we already met with Chris. 
And we, from there on, our relationship continued. The two of them loved horse racing. They're the ones who introduced me to horse racing, that every Sunday we be going to Ngong race course to watch horses race. So we became friends, even social friends. But Chris was also a true Kenyan who was also concerned about Kenya. When multipartism came, we had Ford. Then when Kano Split, the DP was formed. Chris and then John Keane joined the DP. Then they were in the DP. When the elections were coming, the Ford itself split to Ford Asili and Ford Kenya. So now there was a general fear that the opposition was going to lose the elections. And then there were efforts to try to do mediation. I remember Chris Kruby and John Keane led this team from DP. Uh, then uh, there was also the late Kibaki, Kibaki Muridi. On our side here, we were with Paul Muite, uh, Jim Sorengo, uh, trying to do these negotiations uh, with John Keane and, um, and Chris. These meetings were taking place in Chris's office in the International Life House that time. Unfortunately, we were not able to. At that time, the appeal was that if you don't hang together, you shall be hanged separately. Unfortunately, that did not come, and therefore we were hanged separately. <laughs> the next other time that Chris was doing mediation was following the crisis of 2007, when um, many people had died, and then we had the team, first President Kufu had come, and he was the one who was all the time to bring to President Kufu to us. So they were all the times together whenever Kufu came to, to meet with us at uh, the, inter, uh, at the Intercontinental Hotel. Then uh, it is John Kufu who suggested the name of Kofi Annan as the mediator. And Kofi Annan came and led the team of mediation. After that, there was now this issue of how do we form the Grand Coalition Government. How do you share the portfolios within the Grand Coalition government? There was a stalemate, almost a breakdown. And uh, the two people who came to approach me to agree to a compromise, one of them was Chris Kirubi. The other one I will not go mention here. But Chris came and passionately pleaded with me to agree at least to have a dialogue with Kibaki at that time. He was so passionate, and because of the old time's sake, I said, well, I'm ready. And then an arrangement was made with this meeting in Sagana with Kibaki, eventually we managed to come up with a compromise solution and the Grand Coalition government was formed, thanks to initiative by Chris Kirubi. So we have had good times with Chris, many things we've done together. The last time, of course, you, not the last time, at the time I was sitting with him in the house 
when he then told me about his sickness and asked me about the hospital in, in um, uh, Massachusetts. And of course, he knew I had been on a sabbatical in Boston. And I gave him the name of the doctors. And that's how he ended up in the Massachusetts General Hospital for treatment. And when he came back, he reported to me how he had enjoyed his stay in Massachusetts and how those people had looked after him. So we would sit sometimes and talk about very many issues. Grace was a visionary person who had a passion for excellence and wanted only the best for his country, Kenya. Sometimes last year, he had offered to assist Gorma here football club. He called me because I am the patron of Gorma here football club. And he said we should go to two rivers. So I took the entire Gorma here football club to two rivers. And Chris gave them not only a donation, but also offered the playing field there for Goma here as a training ground. So Goma here has been training there because of generosity of Chris Kirubi. That day, when we were there, when they played the music, Jerusalem, and me and Chris danced <laughs> crazy Jerusalem, that a video went viral, me and Chris dancing in Jerusalem. So, what do I say in conclusion? This was a man who believed that Kenya is playing in a different league. That Kenya does not deserve to play in the league in which Kenya is playing today. That Kenya can be in another league. And he used to give a very good example of countries that have been able to transition, like Singapore. He really loved to give example of Singapore and uh, Malaysia and Korea. And I'm saying these countries were just as poor as Kenya, but they have managed to transition from poverty to wealth. The example I'll give you is that in 1952, Ethiopia helped South Korea. Ethiopia sent 5,000 troops to South Korea to help South Korea. In 1952, Ethiopia was more developed than South Korea. But then, um, 60 something years later, the, the GDP and the pro capita income in Ethiopia was still just $300 per annum, when in South Korea it was 19000 Koreans now go and build schools in, in Ethiopia. You ask yourself, what happened? And the same thing has happened also to us here in Kenya. We are colonized. But so are Korea and all those other countries. So we really believe that it is possible to transition from poverty to, to, to prosperity if you've got right policies. And he was also an enemy of corruption. We talk very passionately against corruption. He says there are very many ways of making wealth without having to steal. Those who steal and after stealing that money, then they will run around and give donations to schools in terms of buses, women groups, youth, and then come to churches and donate millions of shillings without saying where that money is coming from. Trace Kirubi hated those people and believed that you can make money without having to steal it. May the Lord has Chris soul in eternal peace.
actually, uh, uh, Honorable Raila Odinga probably knew about the dress code was black and red, and I thought that's why he came that way. Um, let me ask uh, Honorable um, Rachel Ruto to come and give her message of condolences on behalf of the Deputy President. Robert, Marianne, Andrew, your children, and together with the uh, family of Chris, Fem Family Church, together with the leaders, I want to bring condolences from my husband, the Deputy President of this great republic. He is not able to be with us today, but he asked me to bring his condolences and together with our family. And from my, my own personal um, encounter with Chris, allow me to say one thing. I know uh, James Moria has talked about the attributes of Chris, but I think he forgot one that I would like to say. Chris was a giver. I remember in 2017, when we went around the country praying for the nation during the electioneering period, uh, we were concluding here in Nairobi, and I approached my spiritual authority, Mam Teresia Wairimo, if we could do the final prayer in Uhuru Park. And we came together to put uh, money together to be able to do that event. And I remember mom asked that we could invite uh, the late Chris Kirubi. And we had a dinner here in the church to raise funds for that prayer meeting in Uhuru Park. And I remember when I stood to speak, uh, the late Chris Kirubi asked me how much money we needed for the event in Uhuru Park. And when I gave him the figure, he said that he was going to pay the entire amount and that now dinner should be served. Chris was a giver. Uh, it surprised all of us because it was not little money. As you know, it was in the millions, but he gave it all. And I remember when we had the prayers on the 31st of July of 2017, he was there himself. And I want to attest to all the people that have said that Chris was a Christian, he loved the Lord, and he was born again. When we heard about the sad news of his sickness, we went again with Mom Teresia Wairimo, with our sister Christina, to see him. And I remember taking to him a cross-stitch piece just to remind Chris of the many pieces of lives that he has put together. We condole with you. May the Lord comfort you. It is not easy to lose a father. It is not easy to, lo to lose a leader like Chris. But I just want to tell you that the Lord will comfort your hearts even as you continue. And to all the work that Chris has done in this country, we really appreciate him because of the many lives that he touched. You know, uh, the employment that he has given many people that otherwise would never get an employment and how he has built the economy of this nation. We are grateful to him and we say rest in peace, Chris Kerubi. May the Lord bless you. Finally, I'd like to call Ambassador Amina Mohammed to come and give the tribute on behalf of His Excellency the President. Robert, Marianne, Andrew, the entire Kirubi family, our leaders who are present here uh, today, Sister Teresia Wairimu, Mama Rachel Ruto, dear friend and sister Christina, and I hope you'll allow me to also mention Sid Chatterjee, who came in from China to be here with us this morning. He's the UN coordinator in, in China now. He was in Kenya before. 
I gave my tribute, my personal tribute, uh, last night. And I just want to recall two things that I said. That Chris was a dear friend of mine who was really generous with his time. I think that all of us know that if you called Chris, you'd call back. And that if he didn't hear from you for a while, he would call you and look for you. He also was an infectious patriot, nationalist, and had an infectious sense of purpose. He truly was a great friend to me and to my family, and for that I will always be grateful and I will always remember him. This morning I have the privilege and the honor of reading a message of condolence to the family, relatives, and friends of the late Dr. Christopher John Kirubi from His Excellency President Uhuru Muigai Kenyatta. It's with immense grief and a deep sense of personal loss that I send you this message of condolence and encouragement following the death of Dr. Christopher John Kirubi. In the passing of this powerhouse of a man, we have been robbed of a seasoned businessman, entrepreneur, industrialist, innovator, and philanthropist whose influence spanned real estate, media, retail, agriculture, charitable works, financial services, banking, and many others. Aside from being a highly successful business mogul, Mr. Kirubi was also a celebrated mentor and role model with a passion for uplifting and supporting others. Under his wing, many of the past and present crops of business leaders and media personalities rose to prominence. Socially, Chris was a cheerful, approachable, and accessible corporate leader who interacted with Kenyans of all walks of life with ease. Indeed, he was one of the most accessible corporate leaders that our country, Kenya, has ever produced. He interacted with Kenyans, especially the youth, on his radio shows, in public appearances, and inspirational social media posts. Due to his wise words and advice, especially the sharing of his experiences in overcoming adversity, generation after generation of Kenyans and Africans improved the personal, their personal and business circumstances. Death is not the end of the legendary Chris Kirubi. He's immortalized through his many achievements, the many millions of lives made better by his business brilliance, the billions of shillings added to our economy through his innovative projects, and the immeasurable number of ways he brought happiness to all our lives. To the family of the late and great Dr. Christopher John Kirubi, led by his children Robert Kirubi and Mary Ann Sangi, as you mourn the death of Dr. Kirubi, may our prayers and those of other Kenyans of goodwill give you and your family strength and fortitude. May you take solace from the word of God in Revelation 21.4, which says, And God shall wipe away all your tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow nor crying. Neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. We are all privileged that Dr. Christopher John Kirubi lived amongst us. We thank God for the time we shared with him, for his long life, and for all that he was. May the Almighty God rest his soul in everlasting peace. Uru Mugai Kenyatta, CGH. President of the Republic of Kenya.
uh, Robert, uh, Marianne, Andrew, and the family. Uh, allow me to extend my condolences, my personal condolences, and my gratitude for allowing us to share Chris um, and his life with us. Uh, you know he spent a lot of time with his friends, um, and me particularly, over the last many years. Marianne and Robert used to see me at their house regularly and wonder what uh, their dad and I used to speak about. But uh, like he has all that we've said during the last three days, he really enjoyed spending time with young people. Believe it or not, I was actually young when we met. So that was something that I did not take for granted. Um, he's been at many of the milestones in my life. He got me my first job. He was there when I got married and all the rest of the time. So thank you very much. I think now I'm going to hand over to Anthony Boro, who is going to deal with the family tributes and the eulogy which will come next. So thank you very much. Good afternoon all. Uh, I'm going to take you through uh, the family tributes uh, this afternoon. But before I do that, I would like to call uh, two of our family members who will take us through the eulogy of Dr. Chris Kirubi. I will call, it will be done in two parts, so I'll call Jimmy Kenyan and uh, Susan Schlitter. I think the order is Susan and then uh, Jim. Thank you. Good afternoon, everybody. All protocols followed. I was told late last night <laughs> that I would be reading the eulogy. I had a look at what had been written and I thought, I'm going to do my version. So here it goes. Christopher John Kirubi was born on the 20th of August, 1941, in Kongoni Farm in Naivasha. 1941 was, of course, the height of World War II and also the peak of colonial rule in Kenya. Christopher was the fourth-born child of Andrew Minor and Kafura Wamboi Joguna. Andrew worked for a white settler family who are owners of Kongoni Farm. It is indeed in Kongoni Farm that Andrew and Kafura raised their children, namely Salome Wamboi, Elizabeth Waivera, the late Cosmos Njuguna, Christopher Kirubi, Anthony Martin Minor, and Dr. Michael Keshohe Kirubi. A last tragedy hit the family when their mother, Kafura, died of childbirth complications in 1948. Andrew subsequently remarried, which caused a rift in the family when his new wife was unable or unwilling to take care of his six children. Shortly thereafter, the family disintegrated and went into different directions divided amongst various relatives. Christopher, however, continued to stay with his father in Kongoni Farm. Alas, tragedy would strike once again when Andrew was killed at the beginning of the Mau Mau War. These were turbulent times. The settler farmer, fearing for his life, relocated to South Africa, but not before he promised to educate young Christopher, who was now an orphan. 
Christopher attended Naivasha Primary School, then joined Colonia High School and completed his A-levels at Friends School Kamusinga. He then joined Strathmore for his A-levels, but was unable to complete his studies because due to financial constraints. Christopher was, however, a lifelong learner. He loved education, and throughout his life up to the end, he continued to engage in continuous education. Now my brother Jimmy will take over and do his uh, work experience. <coughs> Good afternoon, business. Let me look at this. <laughs> Dr. Kirubi has had a long and rich career history. He began his work life as a salesman with Shell, Af with Shell, Af with Shell. He was then employed at Voice of Kenya, who at one time even took him for further training in Australia. Thereafter, he worked for the pharmaceutical company Sterling Winthrop, um, and later worked for CMC Motors, also worked for Kenatco. Uh, those are some of the few companies he worked for before he decided to go into self-entrepreneurship. He registered and opened his own firm, Kiruma International Company Limited, trading mostly in coffee, and had one property at that time, Kiruma Court. In 1982, he set up shop within a rented office at International Life House. This was a building owned by Queensway Development uh, Corporation. And then when the owners uh, left the country in 1985, they appointed Dr. Kirubi as a director. Later, together with his partners, Dr. Kirubi acquired the building from Queensway Development Corporation. And it's at this time that he changed the name to International House. He was able to substantially grow his portfolio of properties. Um, he was able to expand also to other sectors of our economy uh, through his entrepreneurship, thus giving birth to other companies uh, that he owned, such as Hako Industries. Over the years, Dr. Kirubi has worked, owned, and been a board member in various local and, inter and international companies and institutions, ranging from government, retail sector, manufacturing, advertising, property, agriculture, um, etc. He also served in many industry associations like CAM, Kenya Association of Manufacturers, Global Health, NGOs, Global Business Coalition for Africa, and as chairman of the Kenya Private Sector, HIV and AIDS Business Council. Until he passed away, he was the chairman of Hako Industries. He was the chairman of Hako Industries. Manufacturers have entertained Entered, uh, having entered the manufacturing sector in the 1970s, he was recognized as a one of the first indigenous uh, Kenyans in manufacturing. He was also the chairman of Coca-Cola, Nairobi Media, Nairobi Bottlers, DHL, Worldwide Express, Capital Media, International House Limited, Smart Application, he was the deputy chairman of Bayer East Africa. All of these companies of which we've heard about and how he went about his business in the last 
a uh, few days um, at home, at his home, and also when the business side uh, gave their tributes here. He was also the director and majority shareholder of Centum Investment Company. Apart from his personal work, and we've heard from the political class, Dr. Kirubi was involved extensively with several African governments. He also served on the National Economic and Social Council, which was responsible for crafting Kenya's current blueprint for growth, Vision 2030, under President Kibaki's regime. He also has worked with the government of Ghana, members of the Investors, Associate, Investors Advisory Council, and as Ghanaian Honorary Consul General in Kenya from the year 2000 to 2008. He is a true nationalist, passionate ambassador for the Kenya country brand. He always had his Kenya wristband and served as chairperson of Brand Kenya Board from March 2016 to December 2017. He was very passionate about making a difference in the lives of disenfranchised groups and was involved in a number of social causes. Until his passing away, he, was, he served on the Harvard Global Advisory Council. He also served on the institution, Institutions Africa Advisory Council. He was a co-founder, council member of the African Union Foundation, which was formally launched in 2015 to help Africa be responsible for providing an economic platform for her own without always relying on donor funds. He was a founder trustee of the August 7th Memorial, as we heard from the French uh, representative. Dr. Kirubi has been featured in several local and international publications, most notably Forbes Africa Magazine, Forbes Africa Blog, News Africa Magazine, which features 100 most influential Africans, business and in the financial category. And on the life journey side, he's been on scaling heights, high achieving men in Kenya. He was also in 2015 awarded Africa CEO of the Year by the Africa CEO Forum based in Geneva. In Geneva. He was honored by several governments and is a recipient of the Chief of the Burning Spear, Kenya, the honor of the Grand Medal, Kenya, Ghana, and the insignia of Chevalier of the Legion of Honor by the French government in 2015, an occasion we had great honor in attending. Um, I think there, I'll bring you to sort of round it up soon. When we think of the life of Christopher John Kirubi, we think primarily of great achievements, education, business, media, etc., and the creation of wealth. We think of a life of luxury and worldly belongings. But more than anything else, Christopher John Kirubi loved his family. He did everything in his power to take care of his children and siblings. But deep down in his heart, he never stopped yearning for his mother, Kafura Wamboi. His daughter, Marianne Wamboi, and the many nieces blessed and honored with her name can attest to that. A reporter once asked him, Dr. Kirubi, if you could do it all over again, what would you do differently? You have achieved everything possible. What is left for you to do? His answer, heartbreaking but not surprising, was, I would give it all up in a heartbeat just to see my mother's smiling face once again. 
Christopher John Kirubi rests easy in the loving arms of Kafura Wamboi today. May God hold them both in the palm of his hand. Thank you. Uh, as we continue, I think the family, we are going to be very brief, but before I go to the other family members, I think there's one person that uh, we left out, that is uh, David Kibaki, to give a tribute on behalf of the former president, uh, Honorable uh, Mwai Kibaki. Good afternoon, uh, Marianne, Robert, and the entire Kirubi family. This is a message from, of condolence from Mwai Kibaki, the third president of the Republic of Kenya. I have received the sad news of the passing on of Dr. Chris Kirubi. A man I have known closely for many years. May the Almighty God grant his family and friends the courage to bear the loss of their loved one. Of the many facets Chris is known for in Kenya, and indeed further afield, his acumen as an industrialist and a businessman clearly stand out. He was an entrepreneur par excellence and had an exceptional eye for opportunities that to some were merely tenuous or even ethereal. A man of notable charisma, Chris had a clear philosophy from which he derived his sense of purpose and style of management engagement. His prodigious success was certainly not a result of happenstance. Chris was as strategic in his endeavors, be they running industries, media, serving the public, or farming, as he was hands-on. As a mentor, he shared a lot of wisdom in his popular Ask Kirubi forum. Chris was a jolly man. He leaves behind an indelible legacy, bedecked with and among other elements, industriousness, determination, and public spiritedness. May his soul rest in eternal peace. Mwai Kibaki, third president of the Republic of Kenya. Thank you. So uh, the next stage, I think we've categorized uh, ourselves into siblings. So I'll have the I'll have somebody from uh, Dr. Michael Vishuhi Kirubi come and uh, pay tribute on behalf of Delta and the family. Good afternoon, all protocols observed. My name is Maria Mumbi Kirubi. 
I am the daughter of Dr. Michael Gishuhi Kirubi, who was the youngest brother of Christopher Kirubi and the cradle of his heart. The bond that my dad shared with Uncle Chris was a bond that was so unique and so dear. It was a bond we've never seen before. So unique that my dad decided to take his name as Kirubi and we took the last name as Kirubi. That is why we are called Kirubi. I'm here on behalf of my dad to read his tribute. To my brother Chris, you loved me from a tender age and raised me as your own until your last breath. I will love you eternally. When I was in class three, Chris took me in and he raised me as his own. He loved me, he educated me until my PhD level. He gave me all the tools I needed in life. He supported every journey of my life and each milestone. He was the only father figure I ever knew. He held our family together and he took it on his shoulders to take care of his sisters and his brothers. Any time we came to him for help, advice, be it one thing or another, he was always there. He was always real and honest. Anyone who knows Uncle Chris knows that he said what you needed to hear when you needed to hear it. He'd push you to be the best and he always believed in you. You counseled my children and loved them as if they were your own. You taught them the values of discipline, you equipped them and you helped them, stand, and you helped them understand the importance of education and gave them a role model to always look up to. Even though you are not here with us anymore, your spirit and your legacy is with us and it will live on forever in our hearts. Napoleon said once, when he was boasting about what he had done for France, after it had, after it had, failed, for, after it had failed so many revolutions, remember France, I picked you from the gutter with my sword. And that is what my brother Chris did for me. He picked me from the gutter with his sword, loved me, nurtured me, and made me into the man I am today. When I knew I was coming to speak here on behalf of my dad, I said to him today, Daddy, what will we say? How will we say goodbye to Uncle Chris? And he said, there is nothing else to say but to tell him I love him. And that is what I leave you with. Uncle Chris, we love you. Rest now. Thank you. I think I'll now move on to the grandchildren. There was a tribute from the grandchildren. Good afternoon, everyone. My Guka, was different. My Guka was different things to all of us. He was a mentor, a boss, even a partner. Maybe your relationship goes a bit deeper, like a friend, a cousin, an uncle, a brother, or a father. He was my grandfather, and so much more. He taught me many things, like to be strong, true, to always follow my dreams, or being fearless, but most of all, to be brave. When my, father, when my grandfather was first diagnosed with cancer, I was scared, but whenever I went to visit him, he was smiling. He was always smiling. We had, when, he had got, when he had to go to America to get treatment, he went, I went with him, and whenever we visited him in the hospital, he was smiling. When he was first diagnosed with brain cancer, he kept on smiling. 
I was scared during all of this, but whenever I saw him, his, his smile, the fear, this, his smile made my fear go away. It was gone so fast that it was like it was never there. Now it's my turn to be brave, and not just for him, for my mom and my uncle Robert, and the, fir and rest, and the rest of my family. He all taught us something, so let us appreciate that. Dear Guka, I know we all miss you dearly and, we, and I know we all play, prayed for you, but it makes me happy knowing that you're in a better place and you're not in pain. My love for you is endless, more than you would believe. You lived a joyful life traveling everywhere. We all, we, we all love you so much, Guka. He, there is no one in the universe that could take your place, Guka. May you rest in peace. I called Christopher Jr. to come and play. Hi everyone. So I've agreed literally on my flight here to play some music for you. Um, but before I do, I wanted to just um, say a few things. Um, as everyone was speaking, I was reminded of um, a memory when I was really young and Goku would call me and he would always ask me about school and how I was doing. And I'd try and tell him that, oh, I was having a great time and I you know, enjoyed school. And he would always interrupt me and say, but are you number one? Um, and I think my life's taken you know, a very different path to his. And I have no head for business or money. My dad can confirm that. <laughs> um, but I just wanted to say how grateful I am that I had someone in my life who constantly inspired and encouraged me to be great and show me what greatness is. And while I mourn the time that we have spent together, I also mourn the fact that I don't have the chance now as an adult to show him the life that I've built for myself and the things that I've achieved and to express to him how grateful I am and how instrumental he's been in helping me build that. Um, and I hope he'd be proud of me. And I'm very proud to be his grandchild. Um, so yeah, I need a couple minutes just to set up. That's okay. Is that like a music stand or something I can use? Uh, as Christopher is setting up, I think we go to the next uh, tribute, and these ones will come from uh, nephews and nieces. I think there's a combined one from uh, Maria Mumbi and Shazan Kirubi. Please come, come on stage.
Good afternoon all. Um, my name is Shazan Kirubi, daughter of Dr. Michael Kishuhi Kirubi. Um, to many of you, Uncle Chris was known as Chairman, Daktari, uh, DJ CK, among many other titles. But to me, he was simply Uncle Chris. Um, beyond his public persona, he was the pillar and the patriarch for our family. He was my father's eldest brother and a father figure to my siblings and I. For as long as I can remember, Uncle Chris always challenged us to do better and to be better. He was a man of many talents and I was always amazed by his intent and his intuition. Uncle Chris would always jokingly introduce me as his niece who worked with refugees. That was what many um, people came to know me as. It was a joke between him and I because he was intrigued with what I did. Also, he's the one who influenced my decision not to go into law, but to go into business administration, and then I veered off into international development. Um, we had many debates by his fireplace talking about the displacement, the displacement crisis in Africa and me trying to challenge him to try and invest in the humanitarian sector. Like the true businessman that he was, he wanted to know the risks involved. I will forever cherish those, those, evenings, those evenings spent together and our long walks in Thika at the farm. I always thought that Uncle Chris had an extraordinary life. Looking back now, I realize that it was not the events in his life that were extraordinary, but the way he faced them. He faced life with intelligence, courage, wit, and purpose. And as I finish um, my tribute, I leave you all with a short quote from one of my favorite authors. If God gives you a seed, he expects you to plant it. If he plants it for you, he expects you to water it. If he waters it for you, he expects you to prune it. If he prunes it for you and keeps it for you, he expects you to harvest it. If he harvests it for you, he expects you to store it. And if he stores it for you, he expects you to keep it safe from getting rotten. And if he keeps it from getting rotten for you, he expects you to account for the seed. Yes, life is all about purposefully fulfilling a purpose. Uncle Chris fulfilled his purpose in more ways than one. And if we want to continue on with his legacy, we all need to leave our purpose. Uncle Chris, I will miss you. Mina, Marie, and I will take care of Dad. We love you always. Your dearest niece, Shazan Kafura Mamboi Kirubi. I'm back again. Uh, my tribute to my dearest Uncle Chris is basically in two fond memories I have of him. I broke it down to what I thought of him as a guide and as a father figure. Now, many of you know that Uncle Chris likes to coin nicknames for people. <laughs> Actually, he called my sister Skinny, and he called me the lawyer or the stubborn one. And one of the memories that comes with this is when I finished high school. And I actually didn't want to do law. And my dad said, you go tell Uncle Chris that you don't want to do law anymore. And um, when I went to him, he said, well, what do you want to do? And um, I said, I have an interest in writing. And he said, well, you can do some writing for some articles on the Capital FM website for about three months. But I want you to do a report for me after that and tell me what you've learned in those three months. And by the time I was done, it was clear to me I did want to do writing, but in a different sense. I still wanted to do law. I was just confused about it. And in that way, that is how he was a guide. He was always there to show you the way, but he would do it in such an intelligent way so that you find the path for yourself. As a father figure, he was always there for us. As Susan said, he loved his nieces and his nephews dearly. He loved the youngins in the family. He always had time for us and our stories. I remember last year when I got my first car, I used to go see Uncle Chris on Sundays and he asked me, why do you come here on Sundays? And I said, well, there are no cars on the road and that's when I can drive. <laughs> and he said, where, where, watch 
And I said, yes, Uncle Chris, that's the only time I can drive. And he said, I will make a point to call you every Saturday, every Friday, every Monday, every Tuesday, and tell you to come and see me so that you can drive to my house. And he did that, and he did that constantly. And every time I came, he said, were you scared? And I said, no. And finally, I got the courage to do it. And to us, that was Uncle Chris. We loved him so much, but now he'll rest. Thank you. I, I call upon uh, Christopher to, to do a piece. Are you ready? All right. As you can see, I think we have uh, very many family members. We are going to uh, go to Robert Kirubi. Pastor Wairimu and the Faith Evangelistic Ministries, honored guests, good afternoon. Before I begin, and I can see he's gone now, I was not personally aware that the Honorable Odenga recommended the hospital in Boston to my father. Besides the wonderful care that they gave him, the hospital canteen had the best chocolate cake I've ever eaten. And while spending time with dad in his hospital room, I could go through several slices a day, much to his amusement. This has been an amazing and uplifting week. It has kept my sister, our entire family, and I going through a very difficult time. We sincerely thank you for your kindness and your empathy. You've all told amazing stories about his generosity, his intelligence, his work ethic, but there's perhaps one thing that hasn't been mentioned to its fullest, and it may come as a surprise to many of you. Dad loved a good argument, especially with me. After I left Kenya uh, to go to university and later on to work, I'd come home every so often on holiday and we established a little routine between us. The night I was leaving home to go back to work or to university, whatever it was, we'd have dinner together at home, either just the two of us or with some family members around. We'd almost always get into an argument about something. It was our manly Kirubi way of telling each other that we'd miss each other. Um, and it used to be quite profitable for me. Before I stormed off and got in the car, he'd always make sure at the end of the argument that my pockets were filled with either US dollars or pounds. I remember one particular discussion. I asked dad, have you ever thought of what you will do when you retire from work? <laughs> I blame my youth and na naivety at the time. As you can imagine, things went downhill very quickly. I'll spare you the blow by blows, but we got into a very technical discussion about the definition of work. Dad was extremely vocal and clear that what I did at DHL was work. There was absolutely nothing about what he did every day that could be classified as work. That conversation came rushing back to my mind over the last few days. As he annoyingly always was, Dad was right. The thing is, though, I've heard a lot about loss. And personally, after this week, I refuse to accept that we have lost anything. As I look around this wonderful church, I recall the individual conversations I've had with many of you at home, all the wonderful tributes from everyone, 
My sister and I, our whole family, have not lost anything. Our Father lives on in every single person He touched. Every person who acted upon His advice, counsel, and mentorship. I call upon everyone who understood what Dr. Chris Kenubi stood for to take whatever they have learned from him and make sure they take positive action to focus and continue to do the right things for themselves, their families, the community, and for this country. And most importantly, I call upon you to help others around you as my father helped you. Invest in people as he did his whole life. He may not be physically here, but that is how he will continue to live amongst us forever. I won't accept that we have lost him, and I look to you all to hold yourselves accountable to take his wisdom forward. If you don't, like my father, you'll come to understand I also love a good argument. To quote Mark Twain, the two most important days in your life are the day you were born and the day you find out why. My father, Dr. Chris Kirubi, found out why very early in life, and he spent his life expressing that reason to and through all of us. Let us all honor his, his, his reason in Jesus' name. Thank you. I would like to thank you very much uh, for being patient. I think we have another day, which is tomorrow, and the rest of the tributes, I think we'll be able to do them at, uh, at home. Uh, so basically, I would like to call Andrew Musangi uh, to uh, vote of thanks. For, okay. Uh, so thank you very much. Just as uh, two announcements, I think that family members in the committee will head up upstairs after we finalize uh, here. Thank you. Thank you for coming.